Hi guys, this is Hamza from Imagine Art and today we'll be talking about JSON prompting. If you're someone who struggles with being able to translate uh, their vision accurately or they struggle with uh, prompting to be able to get the exact sort of generations, be it images or videos that they're looking for, then this tutorial is for you. So JSON prompting is essentially a method of prompting that uh, breaks your conventional simple uh, text prompts into into a certain structure that is understood better by the uh, the video or image generation model. What that essentially means is that all of your details uh, that you would like to see in your generation are broken down into multiple headings, right? And once in that format, once you place all of your requirements or describe your generation in a specific format where you've divided all of the various visual elements and all of the other elements that go in your generation into multiple different headings, the platform ensures better prompt adherence. And overall, so JSON prompting is a much accurate way to uh, maintain prompt adherence. To, uh, so to show you guys how uh, JSON prompting works, I have a generation in front of me, this image in particular, right? I've generated it using uh, the Seadream V4 model. And now I want to animate this image uh, and turn it into a video where the camera slowly uh, pans towards her face, right? As the, and I would simultaneously, as the camera pans towards her face, I would also like her to say a dialogue that I have in mind, right? So what I'm going to do then is save this image and then move on over to ChatGPT, right? Um, once that is done, I'm going to upload my image over here and give and prompt it to I want a JSON prompt using this reference image to have a gradual cinematic zoom towards her face as she says in a mysterious tone they are coming. Save yourselves. Right? So usually this is what, uh, this is somewhat what your prompt would look like to animate this image, right? Where you would say that a gradual cinematic zoom in towards the character's face and then you would in quotation marks add the dialogue, right? But notice how once I click enter, uh, I get a different, a very different format of a prompt. That format is this. As this format loads, you'll see how all of the various other elements of the image have been broke, of the video have been broken down into multiple different headings. For example, you have the style, which uh, it describes it to be cinematic realism, and then the camera movements, where it's a gradual zoom in, start short, mid short, and then the end sort, short and then there's the scene which has been described under and every element of the scene in itself such as the environment the props and the lighting and so all of these visual elements have been uh, divided into different headings right so this allows better prompt adherence for the video generation model and naturally uh, will allow us to have better results so i'm going to come back here to on to imagine i'm going to hover over the image and click on animate Right, so you see how I have the, the image added over here. And I'm simply going to paste the JSON prompt over here. Right, once that's done. So since we have speech, um, we're going to select Google Vue 3.1, right? Uh, there are a few models, there are a few different models on ImagineArt that offer a uh, perfect lip sync. Google Vue 3.1 is one of them. Google Vue 3 is one of them. Uh, perfect lip sync is also offered by WAN 2.5. For this generation, I'll be using Google Vue 3.1. Now with this selected, uh, I'm going to click on create. So uh, the idea for JSON prompting, it can be very helpful when you have an audio integration in your, in your videos, right? So in this case, which would be the speech, right? Getting those right is often an issue that a lot of creators face. Hopefully with JSON prompting, you will not be facing a similar uh, similar issue and you're going to get the exact generation, the exact result every time. 
Additionally, JSON prompting is also very helpful in terms of having multi-layered short compositions. What that means is that your various different elements are divided into different headings. Additionally, um, there is also, if you'd like to, if you have a more complex sort of a generation where you have multiple cut scenes, multiple different uh, scenes cutting through different environments within a single generation that you would like to see, in that situation, a JSON format of prompting, uh, which includes timestamps, is um, allows for much better prompt details. Right, guys, so we have our generation ready now. I'm going to show this to you guys and show you how much better your generations can be by using JSON. Our commission. They are coming. Save yourselves. In, right, so that's that's exactly what we wanted here. I mentioned I wanted it to be an eerie, mysterious voice and the exact dialogue that I mentioned. So it's been able to translate that uh, all of the details that I gave it uh, into my prompt and you can see how effective it has been to be able to integrate all of that in my in the final result that I've gotten and I've in my first try so uh, I haven't had to do any iterations wasting my credits on the platform to uh, get the exact result so in addition to uh, JSON prompting helping uh, with the better prompt adherence and, uh, and audio integration Another benefit of using JSON prompting is, um, is the fact that it allows you to maintain consistency, right? Uh, I understand that users want uh, to have more consistency across multiple generations, so JSON prompting can also help you in that regard. So for example, I'm going to paste this prompt again, and suppose if I want to change the dialogue that the person is saying, or perhaps uh, change another aspect of this video, Right? So I would then just manually edit the prompt that I have over here. So for example, you can see I'm going to go over to the speech section. Right? Instead of saying they are coming, save yourselves. Uh, perhaps we can change this dialogue and we can say they are coming. Um, get ready for prepare for battle actually let's say ask it ask her to say prepare for battle right and we're going to click on create again right so we have our uh, generation with the script with the dialogue change as well prepare. they are coming prepare for battle right so you can see how uh, by just changing a single single element under a single heading in my prompt, I was able to just change a singular aspect, which would be the dialogue in this case, uh, in my generation, while keeping all of the other details uh, in my generations consistent, right? Uh, so this is one uh, use case through which JSON, one of the many use cases actually, through which JSON prompting can be very helpful um, to you guys. Additionally, Additionally, JSON prompting can also be very helpful by for uh, cutscene prompting. For example, what this is what cutscene prompting in JSON formatting looks like. So you see how essentially an additional heading has been added for timestamps, right? What this means is that it defines the timestamps within your video during which uh, the scene is going to play out. So for the first two seconds, you'll have a specific scene. If you want, and then if you want a scene to entirely change, uh, then that is defined through these timestamps. So that means the first two seconds are going to be in a particular uh, setting. And then for the, for the from second two to the fourth second is going to be a different scene. And then uh, after that, for the next two seconds, so like using JSON prompting and timestamps in your JSON prompts, you can achieve these multiple different sort of um, cut scenes within a single generation. So uh, I hope I was able to effectively convey uh, how helpful JSON for prompting can be, particularly for video generations. It, uh, JSON prompting can also be very helpful in image generations. We have an entire tutorial for that as well. You can watch that on the link above, uh, how JSON prompting can be helpful, particularly with integrating texts in um, 
your image generations. But I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to add them in the comment section. Uh, thank you for watching.